These sheep are wandering around in a nice, normal, possibly sheep-like manner. These sheep are not. Both groups of sheep are wandering around in random, unpredictable ways, but this group is using Perlin noise, and this group is using GameMaker's built-in random function. Randomness, or unpredictability, is really useful in making games, but often pure randomness, as you can see, gives you something you don't want, because many things, especially living things, are somewhat predictable. If this sheep is walking this way, it should probably continue to walk this way, and if it changes directions, it would do so gradually. It would not try to go in every direction at once, like these sheep over here. To use a less pretty but perhaps more clear example, here are two graphs. In each case, the graph is made by drawing a line between a series of points. In this case, the points are generated using GameMaker's built-in random function, and in this case, the points are generated using Perlin noise. The graph made using the random function is erratic and unpredictable, where each point is unrelated to the one that came before it. The graph made using Perlin noise is still random in a way, but the change is so gradual, the graph forms a smooth curve. You can see the same thing in two dimensions. Here, every pixel is being generated with a random value. Here, every pixel is being generated using Perlin noise. The Perlin noise version forms a smooth gradient, while the random version is just white noise. Perlin Noise was created by Ken Perlin. He created it for the movie Tron, the original one, and he won an Academy Award for it because while Perlin Noise is random, it is random in a very different and useful way. In Tron, it was used to create textures. It is still used for this purpose, but it's also used for many other things, like randomly generating terrain or movement. I'll be using it in my Vectors and Steering Behavior series to create a nice, smooth, wandering behavior. But it can also be used in shaders, it can be used to create a shaky cam that reacts to slow motion, and really so much more. So how does Perlin noise work? Well, I'm not going to explain the math behind it because honestly I don't know it well enough, and a lot of other people have done it much better than I could. I'll include a link to at least one of those explanations below. But I will explain the general concepts behind the math, and more importantly for us, how to use the Perlin noise function to make things in GameMaker. Perlin noise works in multiple dimensions, but I'm going to explain it in two. So let's say we have a two-dimensional grid. Pretend that at each vertex in the grid there is a value. For any point in the grid that is not on the vertices, the Perlin noise function looks at the four vertices surrounding that point and does some math on those four numbers where the closer the point is to a vertex, the more that vertex's value matters. So if you pick any position, the value returned for that position will always be the same, in basically the same way that the value returned by a random function will always be the same if you set the seed. In fact, you can think of the position as being the seed for the Perlin noise function. However, the closer two positions are, the more similar their values will be because the algorithm is looking at the same or mostly the same vertices, only the weight given to each vertex is changing. Now, this is a slight dumbing down of what is actually going on, but it is correct enough that we can now talk about how to use the function in GameMaker. The only thing I want to add here is that while I explained it in two dimensions, it can work in any dimension. And the Perlin noise code we will be using is based off of three dimensions. So let's look at the code. Let's start with the Perlin noise function itself. As you can see, it's moderately complex, I didn't come up with any of this myself, of course. It's a pretty direct translation of Ken Perlin's Improved Noise, which I translated from some C code online, which you can find here if you're interested. And again, I'm not going to explain the math or the code in depth. What's important is that we pass in three arguments, and down here, we're returning one value. So three arguments in, one value out. Those three arguments specify a point in 3D space, and all of this code figures out what value to attach to that point in 3D space. And again, given the same position, it's always going to return the same value. The other important thing to note is that I've set up some default values for the Y and Z arguments, so that when we use this function, we can pass in just one or two arguments, instead of all three. But it is important to remember that even if we only pass in one argument, the function is still always going to be looking at a point in 3D space. The other arguments are simply being passed in by default. I chose these numbers at random. You could use other numbers. You just don't want them to be integers for reasons I'll discuss at the end. Now, let's look at its use. So here's the code that creates this smooth curve. In the create event, we create a variable and call it n and give it a value somewhere between 0 and 1000. 
Note that we're using the random function, not the irandom function, because again, we don't really want integers. We create an increment variable and set it to a low number. You'll see why in a moment. We then create an array half the length of the room's width plus one. And we loop through that array and we pass in n as the argument to our Perlin noise. And we get one value out of this function. Remember that I've specified two default arguments. So even though I'm only passing in one argument here, there is still an x, y, and z value and we have our point in 3D space. And after we use n, we then increment it. So the next time we pass a value, a position into the Perlin noise function, that position is going to be in a slightly different place but still very close to the position that came before. And that's important because as we mentioned before, the closer the positions are, the more similar the values are. So if you want the Perlin noise function to return a gradual change of values over time, the amount that you change the position you're looking at also needs to be very gradual. So this gets us our random number, but in order to draw it to the screen, we do need to do a little bit more to it. The first thing that I do is map the value between zero and room height and put it into the array. Side note, map value is one of my favorite custom functions. It takes a number and maps it from one range to another, which is incredibly useful in many different circumstances. I include it in almost every project. In this case, it maps the value from a range of negative one and one to zero in room height. So if the Perlin noise function returned negative one, that would be set to zero. And if it returned one, it would be set to room height. If it returned zero, it would be set to half room height and so on. That allows us to scale the return value from Perlin noise to something more useful, something that we can actually see on the screen. Now, Perlin noise doesn't actually return a value between negative one and one, but I'll talk about that more at the end as well. And for now, this is close enough. In the step event, we basically repeat this process once every step. So we get a new value for n, we increment n, we map that value, and then we push it onto the end of the array and delete it from the start of the array so that the array stays the same length. In our draw event, we're just looping through the array and drawing a line. And now that I've explained this code, I wanna demonstrate what happens if you have a high value for n. I have a slider here, which I can toggle on and off, and its position is tied to the increment value. And you can see that if I increase the increment value, the amount, our position in Perlin space is changing every step, we quickly get something that approaches true randomness. And if we decrease the increment value, we get smoother and smoother lines with less and less change over time. I am going to show the 2D example, but before I do, I wanna point out something very important. In the recent tutorial on how computers create randomness, we talked about how random functions aren't truly random. And if you give them the same input, you get the same output. That is true with Perlin noise as well. As I said before, if you give the function the same position, you will always get the same value. And you can consider that position a seed of sorts. Give the function the same seed, you get the same value, just like with a random function. However, with a normal random function, the seed is being changed and then used again, changed and then used again, because the goal is to be as close to true random as you can get. But with Perlin noise, we don't actually want that. We want controlled randomness. We want that similarity. So the Perlin noise function doesn't automatically update the seed when you call the function like the random function does. It just does the math. You have to update the seed manually by changing it in some way over time, which is why I'm incrementing the value after each use and is something you have to remember to do when using Perlin noise. Now let's look at our second example. This code is only used for drawing the results to a surface, so I'm going to skip it and only cover the code that deals with Perlin noise. I'm now declaring both an X and a Y position and a single increment value. We only need one increment value because we will increment the X and the Y position by the same amount, although you could do it by different amounts if you wanted to. And you'll see why this is called Y start in just a moment. Then we have the draw event, and again, I'm going to ignore all of this code, which is just used to draw everything to a surface and focus on this code, which actually creates the 2D Perlin noise. And it is a little bit tricky. At the heart of this code, I'm doing a double for loop, and for every pixel in the window, drawing a one pixel wide square that is colored a shade of gray based upon the value returned by Perlin noise, again, scaled using the map value function. So we get the value from the Perlin noise function with our X and Y position, scale it, set the draw color based on that scaled value, and then draw the rectangle. What's tricky is how we have to increment the position that we pass into the Perlin noise function. We are incrementing the Y value inside the internal for loop and then resetting it every loop, which is why we have the variable Y start. 
And then we are only incrementing the x value as part of the outer for loop. To understand why we are incrementing the x and y values this way, we have to visualize how this is actually being drawn. We start in the corner at some random position for x and y, and then for each column, so the x value across the screen, we go down that column to draw our first column of squares. We don't actually want our x value to increase while we are in this column, because remember that the value we pass into the Perlin noise function is essentially a location, and that how similar the return value is, is directly tied to how close two positions are. So if we increase the x value, then by the time we get back to the top here to start drawing the next column of squares, the value we are looking at in our Perlin noise space is no longer close to the value we looked at right here. So we only want to increase the x position as we move along the columns, and we need to reset the y position as well for the same reason. For any given position in our room here, we want the position next to it to have the same x and y value, offset only by the increment. But if we do that, we get this cool result. So I know this example is a little bit more complex, but hopefully it helps show you how to control the values that you're passing in to the Perlin noise function and also why you need to do so. The last thing to cover is a couple of traps with Perlin noise. The first trap is speed. The Perlin noise function is relatively speaking slow. This room is 480 by 270. That is a total of 129,600 pixels. And it has to run this algorithm for every pixel because we're drawing squares that are only one pixel wide. Now, doing something 129,600 times isn't really that much for a computer, but this algorithm itself is fairly complicated. It's not just adding a number that many times, it's running all of this code that many times. And GameMaker Studio 2 is single threaded, so if I regenerate the room, this is the actual amount of time that it takes to run through the double for loop for a room this size. Again, very slow. So if you're going to be using Perlin noise for textures or large world generation, it might be better to use a shader version, which runs on the GPU rather than your CPU, or use a pre-generated texture. But if you're only going to be running it a couple hundred or even a couple of thousand times a frame, it'll be fine. The second trap is using integers. The value returned by the Perlin noise function, if all numbers passed into it are integers, is always zero. So if you pass in all integers, you will always get zero regardless of what value those integers are. And this, by the way, is why I don't have the default values as integers. The final trap is that Perlin noise is not a random distribution. This may or may not be obvious, but the values tend to be a bell curve around zero, and the extremes are dependent upon how many dimensions you are checking. Again, I don't fully understand the math, and there's also some pretty conflicting answers online, but the consensus seems to be that the range is negative square root of n over four to positive square root of n over four, where n is the number of dimensions. I haven't found this to be particularly relevant in my uses of Perlin noise, but it could matter for some things, so I thought I would mention it here. Last, but most importantly, how do you actually get the Perlin noise function that I'm using? A link to the full project is down below, so you can download and experiment with all of this code and a little bit more. I didn't even cover how the sheep work. But if you just want the function, you can go to the GitHub repo, go to scripts, and then Perlin noise, and then the .gml file, and then just copy this into your own script asset. And there we go. I'll be using Perlin noise for a few different things down the road, but for now, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below. Yeah.